Hi everyone. Well, today I'm at Flieger Museum in Mount Slatlin Shopping and with some fun facts for my uh, Twitch and YouTube viewers, which are about 10 of you out there, but I still love you. Um, fun fact number one is that uh, this building is so high and the sun is so low that on this part it doesn't thaw. Even though it's plus degrees, it's still ice patches here. That's, that's you know, sun angle. So let's go inside and see what, what stupid stuff I can tell you about this place. Mark 19 Spitfire. Uh, this is a, a recognized version. It has a Griffin engine, uh, which does not rotate the same way as the Merlin. Fun fact. Spitfire is truly beautiful. And flying above a Catalina. And behind it was a MiG-15 trying to shoot down. The Venom, which flew on the first wing in uh, Vesteros, which, fun fact, I am from. And the fun fact number two of this aircraft is that the nose is actually made of wood. Well, this probably isn't because it's, it's isn't restored, but it's made of wood. This is the AGS Vigan. Um, and a fun fact about that is it didn't have any radio communications antennas below on the under part of the body, it's only on top of it. Because they were supposed to fly that low and chances were that they were flying constantly over radio towers is, was minimal, so. And this is a fighter controlling room. Looks very similar to the ones I worked in. And here's a simulation of an intercept just north of Gotland. It's a very old type of radar stations. And the guy's talking is a um, pilot, is Boris. He was, uh, it's not Boris, but it's Boris. He flew, um, uh, he was a fighter controller from uh, Fersen and uh, also flew on, uh, on Lansen as a EV operator. And the other guy who was fighter controlling is Tim, who was a fighter controller and allocator uh, way back when. Nice guys. Bristol Bloodhound 68 is a surface-air missile that, uh, well, when they were turned to museum piece, all of them was uh, pointed directly eastward. I wonder why. This is the downed DC-3, the Alient uh, Recognance, which actually my grandfather worked on. Nope, nope, not one of these. But he was part of the crew, however, he had vacation this week. So, this week, this thing happened, he was home, doing stuff on the house. So, this was my uh, grandfather's tool. Uh, this transmission key, uh, you know, the one you do the D dot, D dot on. So that's what he was using. So, kind of strong. This is a PAR radar antenna, that is precision approach radar. One antenna going sideways and the other one going up and down, up and down. And the controller could um, actually manipulate these so they would tip more up or more low, depending on uh, how far out the target was. It needed to be maybe a bit of a higher angle and we started to glide down, you put it on, the, on a good pitch and see it. And also depending on weather, aircraft type and all that. The side by side, um, gives you a range of where they are. And if they were coming to the final from, let's say, right base, they can tweak the antenna further uh, left or right to see it go side by side, more to the left or more to the right. I don't know about this model though, but the modern ones can. 